All right, let's talk about data distribution and specifically how to analyze and visualize distributions in Excel using histograms. Now, histograms are a great tool to understand and visualize how the values in a data set are distributed. So when I talk about distribution, I'm talking about the frequency of observations or rows that fall within given ranges of values, which we call bins. Now in this demo, we're gonna look at a sample of 2000 Olympic athletes. We've got names, genders, and sports, as well as numerical fields to capture their age, their height, and their weight. And these are gonna be perfect fields to use for this type of distribution analysis because we'll be able to see how those ages and heights and weights are distributed throughout this sample. And then we can look at subsets as well to see how those distributions compare for men versus women, or for athletes within specific sports. So to do this, we're gonna insert a new chart. We're gonna drill into our statistic chart options and select histogram in the top left. And that's gonna create these visualizations just like the ones you see here. Now you'll notice that many of them have this kind of a bell curve shape to them. That's a very commonly occurring pattern in nature called a normal distribution. And what this shows us are the buckets or bins that occur most frequently towards the center of this curve, as well as those that occur very infrequently towards the tails of the curve on either side. So common use cases here, visualizing population demographics like we are here, heights, weights, incomes, ages, etc., or identifying the most or least common values in a sample. Now important note, histograms aren't available in older versions of Excel as a standard chart type, I believe they were introduced in 2016. You can access them with Office 365. And I believe if you're using an earlier version of Excel, you may be able to activate the analysis tool pack add-in, uh, which does include the histogram option, but I don't think you'll see it as a standard tool like I'm showing here. Now with that, let's jump into Excel and analyze some data. Alrighty, so if you wanna follow along Go ahead and open up your pro tip workbook. We're going to be working through the analyzing distributions demo in the yellow visualization tip section. And we'll go ahead and link out to go straight to that yellow tab. And here we've got our sample of 2000 Olympic athletes. Keep in mind, 2000 is actually a very small number of observations, especially when it comes to this sort of statistical analysis. But for the sake of the demonstration, it'll get the job done. Uh, it'll be a good enough sample for us to get some experience practicing working with histograms. So what I'd like to actually do here is insert the histograms above this table so that we can filter and slice and dice and look at different sub-segments of our sample. So the first things first, let's right click row one, insert a row, and then use F4 to repeat that action a number of times until you've got about, I don't know, 15 rows above your table. And now let's go ahead and select the first field that we'd like to visualize with a histogram. And in this case, I want height first. So I'm gonna select E18, the header, and use my trusty control shift arrow down shortcut to grab all of the values. And little tip here, if I insert the chart right now, um, it's gonna insert it way down here at the bottom of my list. I don't really want that. So I'm gonna scroll all the way back up. And now I'm gonna to navigate to insert, statistic tools, top left option is the histogram. So there we go, we've just inserted our first histogram. I'm gonna resize it because I'm gonna put a second one up here as well. And basically what you see is that Excel has automatically plotted the frequencies. It's automatically determined a number of bins here on the x-axis. And right off the bat, we see that kind of normal distribution curve taking place. Now with histograms, you can right click the bins format the axis and change things like the bin width or specify a certain number of bins. And often people ask, you know, how do you determine the right number of bins? And the answer is that there's no hard and fast rule. You know, it always kind of depends. Um, for me, I follow two rules most of the time. Uh, one is to come up with bin widths that are readable and that are rounded to whole numbers. And two, I usually follow a rule called Sturge's rule, um, which is a calculation that's based on the number of rows or observations in your sample. 
And this is what Sturge's rule looks like, equal to 1 plus 3.322 times the log of the number of rows, 2,000. So we close that out and hit enter. Sturge's rule suggests just about 12 bins in our histogram for a sample of this size. So what we can do is go ahead and right click those bins, format the axis, and let's see what 12 bins looks like. Well, it's a smaller number. Visually, I think it still makes sense. Problem is that now our bins aren't really readable at all because we have these fractions of centimeters that we're dealing with. So what I'd recommend is starting with Sturge's recommendation and then just going to bin width and rounding it to a close whole number, like six centimeters. And there we go. That looks pretty good. We still get that bell curve type of shape, but we're now looking at bins that each contain you know, six centimeters worth of data. So 173 to 179 here in the middle, 179 to 185, and so on. So let's go ahead and give this a title called Heights, and we're good. And now I wanna insert one more for weight, but instead of starting from scratch, here's a little pro tip. If you select this first chart, kind of hover over the edge until you see that four pointed arrow, click and hold, then hold control and drag to the right. And what I'm doing is creating a copy of this chart as I drag. Very, very nice, like little nifty tip uh, to save a few seconds. Now, once I have that duplicate height chart, all I need to do is grab the range right on the edge and drag it over to the values that I want, which are the weights in kilograms. So all you have to do here is change the title to weight or weights, and then adjust the bins just like we did. So since it's based on the same sample, Sturge's rule would spit out 12 again. So we can see what 12 would look like and then adjust the bin width to the nearest whole number. So maybe 10 kilograms in this case. And now we have nice readable bins for both our height and our weight histograms. You can see that the weight pattern or distribution already looks a little bit different. It's skewed more towards um, athletes who are weighing in at 55 to 65 or 65 to 75 kilograms. But where it really gets interesting is if we actually filter down to sub-segments of our sample here. So we're looking at the entire population right now, but what if we want to compare how females versus males compare? So let's filter just to the F or female. And you can see our histograms adjust. In this case, the most frequent bin for female heights is 167 to 173, so about 170 centimeters. And for weights, about 60 kilograms. Now when we swap this over to M for male, now all of a sudden we see the most common heights from 174 to 180 or 186. Most common weights fall around 80 kilograms. And we can continue to drill in as much as we choose. Let's unfilter by gender. We can look at how you know different sports compare here as well. So maybe we want to look at something like basketball, where we know we'll see very, very uh, tall athletes. So in this case, the most frequent height bin for basketball Olympic athletes is over 190 centimeters, weights 88 to 98. And when we compare that to something like uh, gymnastics, for instance, now the most common height is 167 to 173. The most common weight is 55 to 65. So we're identifying all of these different patterns and trends in the distribution of these height and weight values based on subsegments of our population. So let's go ahead and unfilter this. Feel free to explore this data on your own. There's some really interesting kind of patterns and insights to be discovered here. So there you go, quick little summary of how to use histograms to analyze distributions in your data.